Welcome to A Cargo Update. This is Esha. Today we have Thomas, the Vice President in Sales and Executive of Celebi Aviation. Uh, welcome to our show, sir. Nice to be here. Well, uh, talking about Celebi Aviation, can you navigate through us for um, the evolution of uh, Celebi Aviation in the aviation industry? Celebi has been around for 65 years. Great. Celebi has been uh, founded by a family, Celebi Oglu family. Uh, based in Istanbul. The company has grown into 43 airports. We have uh, been focused mainly on ground handling, but cargo has become more and more uh, important and is on the forefront of um, expanding as well. So at the moment we have four main cargo hubs, mm -hmm. uh, Delhi, Istanbul, okay. Budapest and Frankfurt. Mm -hmm. And uh, the two main uh, business lines are cargo and ground handling, and we also in uh, the GAT handling, and uh, we have a product called Platinum with lounges, executive lounges, meet and greet services. Mm -hmm. So that is where I can say we are at the moment. We are expanding, not too much further west. We are focused on more the emerging markets, mm -hmm. um, moving south. We recently opened in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. We're looking at the East Africa strategy and also what can be done in the Pan-India region where we just opened Chennai and um, Goa and uh, also looking to expand further east. That's a great achievement uh, in all these years. Yeah. Whenever we speak about aviation industry, I mean in these days, uh, especially aviation industry is focusing more on digitalization and automation basically. Uh, these have been the key drivers in the ground handling as well as the cargo sectors. So uh, how is Celebi Aviation leveraging these technologies to enhance the efficiency and streamlining the operations and deliver a better customer uh, experience? I mean, when it comes to digitalization, this is the second biggest industry topic that we mm. talk about, even more than before the pandemic, yeah. um, along with sustainability. So. When it comes to digitalization, um, and especially in the cargo area, um, what are we trying to do? We are trying to utilize digitalization to eliminate the paper trail. We are using digitalization in our planning and real-time rostering of, ours, of our people. So we use it in the operational warehouse management and we're using it in the flight data management. Uh, so in all these areas, um, Chelebi has already implemented some new technologies. For example, introduced Checkit, which is a solution from Nalian for uh, digital checklists. Um, in the build-up process of ULDs, we make sure that um, with these digital checklists, um, the cargo pallets are you know, fit to fly. We also have a truck slot management system where the drivers can get in contact prior to arrival mm -hmm. and their trucks is already registered and when they arrive to the gate. We have also come up recently for both ground handling and cargo mm -hmm. with um, our global operating manual and um, they, these are available for each employee on their mobile phones. Okay. And finally, more important is the cargo cell implementation. That's basically standardizing um, how our cargo um, IT solutions are being handled. And cargo cell was an important um, implementation across all our cargo hubs, and you can compare it with the car manufacturing line. So you standardize the production line for the car, but when you get your personal car, you get it customized to exactly how you need it. Yeah. And that is exactly how cargo cell was being implemented. It was a standardized IT solution, but we were able to get it customized to our needs on how it shall be utilize it. So those are just some some um, examples of the track and trace uh, solution um, has been done. So I think we have pioneered quite a bit in the world of digitalization to be along the uh, 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 change makers. That's a great feat to reach there because, yeah, as you said, whenever we speak about any new technologies being implemented in the industry or a company, it should not be in, on the creamy layer, but it should also be uh, in the bottom side. I mean, like, uh, every staff needs to adapt to the new technologies or the systems whichever is coming. So how about Celebi Aviation? Is it, uh, is it training its staff, I mean, from the ground, from the bottom of the company till the upside, how it works in Celebi Aviation? Celebi has the first IATA-based training academy. So we are able to train our people in our own classroom settings, um, virtual reality um, 
training, on-the-job training um, for the ramp workers to have a virtual reality training on how it is to work under the aircraft, for example, and allows us, and we are really proud of it, it allows us that we can first go and see how we can recruit from within. So this starts with um, giving multi-skilling to the employees during COVID times, that was very important because people were leaving the industry and we yeah. needed to have one person doing the job of three people. Yeah. Um, as there wasn't that much work to do. So this multi-skilling was something how we trained our people across the lines and that helps us a lot. But it also gives the plan opportunity to the employees to rise in their current responsibility to achieve career paths. And um, not surprisingly, um, our president has been in the company for the last 25 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, another senior executive, um, he's in the company for 31 years. Mm -hmm. And that is the loyalty that I have seen since I joined Chelleby, mm -hmm. that um, focus on employee engagement and um, training that you say um, is one of the major focus areas for the company. Mm -hmm. That's a great thing for a company to hold on. I mean, not all can afford to have a training academy separately uh, within a company. And yes and uh, you have achieved a great feat uh, yeah. in that terms. Yeah. Celebi Aviation is always known for its expertise in the cargo, uh, as well as there are warehouse operations, as uh, we learned about Celebi Aviation. Uh, with the growth of e-commerce and the increasing demand uh, for the express and special cargo services, how is Celebi Aviation adapting to meet the evolving needs of the cargo industry? I mean, as I mentioned, we have four main cargo hubs, so we operate mm -hmm. our own warehouses. And I think the most important part is that we have um, you know, reliability and efficiency in the cargo operations, in the warehouse. That is why I, I already mentioned um, cargo cell as an important implementation um, uh, to also make sure that all of our warehouse operations are IATV certified. Yes. It comes with the operational efficiency um, and it then comes with the uh, stakeholder collaboration that when we are implementing a new feature, a new technology, a new system, that it is being followed by all of our employees. We also make sure that we have a proper CRM module applied. We're using Salesforce, um, and that we combine that with um, our um, other system called Icarus to just make sure that the system integration CRM uh, tool really works with the other technology that we are using. So in the, in the cargo operations itself, I already said um, we are trying to constantly make the operation more efficient and we're doing that with truck slot management, we're doing that with a track and trace application um, to really trace the cargo um, you know, to the panel destination and uh, cargo cell is the IT solution that I already mentioned. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot to talk about but yeah. I think um, warehouse efficiency is on the forefront and uh, when we speak about uh, COVID-19 pandemic, as we navigate the recovery phase from the challenging times brought uh, by the pandemic, I'd like to hear your thoughts on how the ground handling services are adapting to meet the changing needs of airlines and the passengers as well. How do you see the role of ground handling evolving in this new landscape? I mean, I'd say that probably nobody would have expected after yeah. this two-year period that it comes back so fast. Yeah. Um, the big challenge that we are having, and you have seen that with, um, the, uh, with the lack of manpower and uh, long delays at the airports, a lot of people have left the industry mm -hmm. during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of companies were not able to afford to keep all of their sales force, so a lot of people lost their jobs. Yeah. But it is seen that aviation um, is a volatile workplace. Um, so people who can then say, I'm safer to go to an Amazon warehouse than working on as a ramp operator. Um, so it's not, it's not easy. So now we need to make sure as an industry that we really can attract the people to really make them understand this is a um, good place to work um, with longevity and it's not a volatile workplace anymore. We need to learn from how we dealt during the pandemic that um, any pandemic is going to um, eventually come and end. And um, what happened here is we um, had quite a long period uh, and we are still with manpower shortages. Um, and we also need to retrain everybody. Uh, so we need to really think when we are running into the next pandemic that may come, um, how we deal with it, how the association as ASA communicating and how IATA 
um, is communicating with the industry of what the ground handlers, what the airline should do uh, in order to make sure that when the period ends and everything comes back to normal, yeah. um, that we can actually you know, pick right up where we left off. Yeah. So this is, uh, I think we need to learn from this experience. Yeah. When we speak about the issues we, what you raise now, like workforce uh, management or be it the shortage of staffs, shortage of pilots, yes. uh, all these things. How do you think at this moment of time the aviation industry is actually trying to overcome the issue? I mean, of course the big challenge is that um, some airlines have the best years um, since their existence. Mm. That is because the people were fed up to sit at home yeah. and they just wanted to go away again. That's why there's an even higher demand in uh, travel than there was before. That of course is a big challenge while we are still trying to recruit and yeah. put the people back in their jobs. Yeah. So the only thing we can do at the moment, we can only make sure that you know the relevant jobs are being filled by attracting women with you know attracting salary packages that yeah. say um, you know during that the security on the job is given somehow yeah. and we need to find an industry standard on how the people can be sure when they come in that um, it's a secure place to work, mm. even if there's another time of pandemic coming around. Mm. Um, nowadays, everybody wants to have some kind of security, you know, and to make sure that my job is still there tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. So um, I think a lot of people lost that trust during this uh, during this period, and that just cannot happen again. Yeah. So basically, saying that aviation industry needs to uh, retain the people. Uh, retain the trust of the people upon itself, yeah? Yes, especially because, look, what happened? Um, we could react fast yeah. with the airline cargo logistics during the COVID period. Yeah. We were able to deliver the necessary vaccines, um, you know, very quickly. So, I mean, we are dependent on the airline traffic and we are depending on the fact that not only that it is safe and reliable, but we also need to make sure that it is um, being seen as a necessity for all mankind. And uh, that's why to put the right industries, stakeholders and have it across the supply chain, um, you know, uh, make sure that there is, uh, you know, there's a real stakeholder collaboration um, by all involved to ensure that um, we maintain a good and reliable airline network mm -hmm. and, uh, and yeah, that's what I can do. Yeah. Well, from the pandemic point of view, I mean, if we speak about cargo, there has been a very good rise in cargo transportations or operations during the pandemic or maybe for past two years. But now it's slowly, slightly deepening. Mm -hmm. uh, what is your take on it? Well, I think it is not uh, surprising. I mean, there was a need um, where the uh, where the, the whole supply chain came to stop, yeah. um, where we basically had to figure out where to, to get manufactured goods from, as China didn't open up for a very long time, mm -hmm. and we all were relying so much yeah. on the Far East. Mm -hmm. I mean, especially for China, I think we are only going to come to maybe 80% by the end of this year before maybe by the end of next year we're coming back to the normal levels. Mm -hmm. I think the e-commerce is starting with the mobile phones and electronics, but I think on the perishable side that is still going to take another year to come. Yeah. So, um, but I think that we are slowly coming back to normal, mm -hmm. that we're slowly coming back to the demand as it was before the pandemic is not really that surprising. Mm -hmm. So I think we just need to um, realize that there was a, um, yes, a hike during these two years to deal and you know, in these unusual times, and also completely different. Um, we talked about the vaccine, but there yeah. were a lot of other commodities that needed to be shipped and that needed to be shipped fast. Um, and the airline cargo industry was, of course, dependent on it because you know that a lot of belly cargo also went up to the cabin cargo. Yeah. So um, we also had to make use of, of, of that. Yeah, that's the point you made. Now, I'm curious to learn how does the Celebi Aviation fosters the collaboration with the airlines, with the airports and uh, other stakeholders to deliver its uh, cargo services. Can you share some examples of that? Well, I mean, when it comes to the airports, we need to make sure that the air infrastructure is there. Yeah. Um, it's a constant struggle. I mean, Frankfurt is an example. We, had, um, we are in a fortunate situation that we have um, three main customers, United, Turkish and uh, LATAM, and uh, among several smaller airlines. We are in a fortunate situation that we have a network of stations, mm -hmm. we have a network of airlines that we work with, and naturally we receive additional RFPs and tender requirements. And it's very hard for us to say, 
because of capacity constraints, we cannot grow. Mm -hmm. So our plans need to be communicated with the airports. There needs to be a close co collaboration, and in this case with Fraport, for example, to make our needs known how we want to increase, how we want to expand our footprint and to make sure that the airport expansion projects are in line with um, the needs of the ground handlers, be it additional warehouse space or you know, however the plans are being done. So the good collaboration with the airports, also for the office needs and you know, for the right infrastructure inside the airport, is important to offer a smooth operation um, and give a good customer experience. Um, if we don't have the required space available, either we cannot serve the airlines, if we don't have enough check-in counters, we're not, you know, we are causing huge lines during the passenger check-in area. So all these things need to be considered when the airports are planning their space capacity and what they're offering to the ground handlers mm -hmm. because that's our workspace. Yeah. Uh, for that, uh, do you think the digitalization of airports will help uh, uh, countering these issues. Well, I hope so. I hope so. It yeah. could be that you know that there's a different kind of approach, um, but there needs to be a good stakeholder collaboration in terms of how the airports and the airlines and the ground handlers are talking exactly. to one another. Yeah. This is why we as ground handlers are very close to um, the airline association now to make sure that the association hears about our issues, um, that we understand how we can liaise with the airlines, with the airports, to make sure that we are heard and that we are given the chance to speak up. And as we are all looking um, at the same industry topics, airlines may be required to purchase green certificates. Mm -hmm. And you also probably want to ask me something about sustainability. So we are very much focused on sustainability. Um, it's our lead certification for mm -hmm. at our um, buildings. Uh, we introduced a whole fleet of only electric cars at Istanbul New Airport. Okay. So the entire car fleet was changed from diesel to electric. We have a plan for the next five years to roll out and to ensure that we're not buying any further diesel equipment. It's all going to be electric. Mm -hmm. And very recently in Delhi, we have introduced 10 apron buses, all electric. But that also can, is an issue if the airport infrastructure doesn't allow us to actually um, charge um, the, the equipment. Uh, yeah. So that needs to be something that needs to be done with the airport planning mm -hmm. um, to allow us mm -hmm. to operate these you know, uh, exactly. electronic vehicles. Yeah. Uh, how do you think uh, these e-vehicles will uh, change the market demand? I mean, in, uh, as you said now, uh, some airports doesn't have the system uh, to charge the vehicles or it's not in a position to allow uh, things go happening as as uh, automation and e vehicles coming into the uh, I don't uh, think that industry. They, I don't think that there there we have the luxury mm -hmm. to to basically say um, if it's a what if uh, we come with, we, we can we don't have that luxury we yeah. need to think about the environment yeah we need to make sure that we focus uh, continuously focus on the sustainability topics and that's why at all the conferences yeah, yeah. from World Cargo Symposium to Air Cargo Europe last week. Um, you know, to the panel here, um, this is uh, one of the main topics that we need to follow. And I think every ground handler is probably going to have a plan um, on sustainability uh, for the coming years. How soon they're going to convert all their diesel equipment to the electronic equipment. The suppliers need to obviously be ready for what's coming. It's for the high loaders, it's for the apron buses, it's for the ramp cars. Um, we need to make sure that um, the you know, GSE equipment park is properly equipped electronically over the coming five to ten years yeah. fully. Mm -hmm. And we need to make sure that the airports are uh, with us and are giving us that opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, when you speak about sustainability, uh, is the e-vehicles or e-system is the only alternative? Is there no uh, other things coming into the market like, for example, to say uh, the hydrogen things and oh, furthermore? I'm not an expert on exactly what yeah. thing, but we basically said like, you know, let's reduce our carbon footprint. Yeah, so that's, that's basically, that's what we are trying to do. Yeah. Um, yes, of course, there are different technologies out there and um, what you mentioned was hydrogen made, of course, different, uh, different possibilities. I think as long as we are focused on getting our, you know, carbon footprint reduced to somewhere um, yeah. lower than where it is today, um, it should be a joint achievement, our responsibility for the environment, and for what we are trying to do in the industry and, uh, and then to set the right message. 
so finally, uh, the future of ground handling holds exciting possibilities. And in your view, what are the, some of the key trends or innovations that will shape the industry's future? And how does the Celebi Aviation preparing itself to stay in, at the forefront? Well, I think that uh, I'm glad that I'm with a company where the shareholders uh, behind the company are very much um, open to the new investments that we um, find out here. Mm -hmm. We basically started with uh, making sure that we do the on-the-job on training to um, always be up to date and train our people to be first to be told, first to be trained. Um, I think it's important that we follow the trends in the digitalization, um, leading also to artificial intelligence to make sure what's coming. Uh, because there's a lot right now for us to say, let's eliminate the paper trail. Yeah. Let's make sure that we digitalize the system, but let's make sure that we have in an industry standard. We all need to come together at regular times to talk about what is the industry standard. And if we agree, then it needs to be also with the customs regulations, you know, that they cannot stand in our way if we're trying to implement new solutions of technology. And then again, the stakeholders that are involved in all of this, um, they all need to pull in the same direction. And I think then it can be a success. Um, for sure, um, there's a need of a good flow at the airport, a good people flow at the airport. So we need to, um, you know, have the right technical solutions and as I mentioned, I think artificial intelligence for everything, face screening, I think will come um, to just make it a seamless process um, at the airport. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a great point, actually. Yeah, it is a very important aspect for all the uh, personalities, all the companies, all the platforms to come together to uh, get a better result. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, thank you. That's all for today. And thank you for joining with us. Sure. Today. My pleasure.